Hi, I'm Barmy. I'm a professional game designer, and I'm here to answer two simple questions. First, what is Minecraft Dungeons? And second, is it for you? Minecraft Dungeons is a new game made by Mojang. It got released on the 26th of May 2020, and it is an all-new action-adventure game inspired by classic dungeon crawlers and set in the Minecraft universe. That is a fairly short pitch, but Minecraft Dungeons is a fairly simple game. The game costs 20 euros, as you can see up here, 20 euros, um, or 20 dollars, depending, right? I think there's, again, some, some mild regional differences there, but it's all going to be in that same general ballpark. You can also get a more expensive version, which costs 10 bucks extra, and then you get some skins, and you also get DLC that's already been announced, but is not yet available. So let's have a look at the game itself, then. In Minecraft Dungeons, uh, you start out by making a character. However, this character is not really a character. It's just kind of you select a skin, really. <laughs> There's not much to it. Um, you can even change skins later. There are no classes. There's nothing like that. Your entire build, and you will have a build, but your entire build is based around items. So, in fact, you can even change what your character looks like after, you know, already having played the game, like I can be, I can be this guy now, there you go, it doesn't really make a difference. So anyway, we're gonna go and select my character, and then we're gonna play. Y you can play this game offline or online. It's a little bit annoying, because this game always sets online as the standard. But game, you must know that we are not playing online, because you require friends for that. <sighs> anyway, we're gonna be playing offline. To be completely honest, online mode actually sounds like quite a bit of fun, but again, yeah, <laughs> the friend situation, right? So anyhow, we got ourselves our character here. Uh, let me go ahead and point out something right away. You may notice that this game looks like Minecraft, but it's like an isometric point of view. I think it's gorgeous. I really have to say, I, I really like the aesthetic of this game. I think they took the Minecraft aesthetic and they really just made it work. I think it, it's super nice, super beautiful. Now, what can we do? Well, here's our character. I am playing with a gamepad. I recommend that you play this game with a gamepad as well. It is playable with keyboard and mouse, but I personally found it to be a bit frustrating at first, and that was because I was playing with a keyboard and mouse. After I switched to a gamepad, the game became a lot more fun, and the controls felt a lot more natural. So, we have a melee weapon, which our melee weapon is a bit simple. It's just this kind of stab. Uh, then we have a ranged weapon, in my case, a bow. Then uh, we have our dodge roll, which we can do in any direction, even while not facing. So I can run this way and then just dodge down here. Then we have three abilities, X, Y, and B. And we have healing, which we can activate uh, with the left button here. You can see that uh, our X and Y, they don't currently work. They require a resource, uh, not mana. This game doesn't have any mana. Instead, all of the abilities are purely based on cooldowns or on souls, which you get by killing enemies. Our B enhances our bow, and now we have this fire projectile here. So anyway, this is our base. In our base, we have two vendors, which we'll have a look at in a second. First, I would like to show you the general gameplay and our mission select. While this area seems rather large, there's actually nothing else here. It's purely decorative. Um, again, while actually quite pretty. Oh, wait, there's a chest. <laughs> I've never found this one before. All right, there you go. <laughs> we found 50 emeralds. How nice is that? But as you can see, there isn't really anything else. So, wait, there's another chest. That one is new, though. Do they, is, there, is that, uh, there we go. We just learned a new thing. Turns out chests spawn in your base. Didn't know that. Anyway, let's get into mission select. So, you can see you've played quite a few of these. This game is procedurally generated, but it isn't completely procedural, which, by the way, I think is actually the better way of doing things. So what they do is they have a few certain predetermined set pieces, and then they have connecting pathways, and they procedurally generate which set pieces to use, and then they procedurally generate the pathways between them. 
which is really cool. It makes it so that you have these nicely designed levels where you fight and then also you have a lot of variety in the enemies and how you get to the enemies and that all is super nice. We're going to go ahead and go into this area so I don't really spoil anything. Of course, it is difficult to spoil stuff just because it is procedurally generated, but I still want to avoid it if at all possible. So into the mission we go. Now, you may have noticed right there that we can select difficulty. The difficulty selector is a really big part of this game. We'll get to that in a second. I'm going to go and skip the cutscenes and in we go. So let's go and start running around a little bit. I will explain how you acquire abilities and items and all of that stuff, you know, or how you use items. I guess how you acquire items is probably rather obvious in a second. For now, we're going to go ahead and just start stabbing some stuff. Here we go. This all blows up very much. Very good. And now you can see we're gathering these little souls. This is just because of my particular build, but now I can use this attack right here, which is nice. So you can see there is actually quite a bit of, um, yeah, there's quite a bit of gameplay here. Um, right now, this is still fairly simple. These guys are not particularly challenging at this point. There's not really too much happening. And we're just kind of going around exploring. We're going to go ahead and stab these zombies because, uh, well, currently they're fairly straightforward. Here we go, we find ourselves a few more of these. So you can see again, the aesthetic of the game works really well and I think it is really quite pretty. Oh, be careful with those. You can also see that there's uh, all of the classic Minecraft enemies, pretty much what you would expect from a game called Minecraft, right? Now, let me bring up one thing right away. There is no actual Minecrafting happening in here. Right? You never get an opportunity to mine anything. You never get an opportunity to craft anything. That's just not part of the game. Whether or not that's good is, of course, up to you to decide. I personally think it's kind of a shame. So you can see this is very much a Diablo-esque game. Right? You run around, you stab stuff, and you hopefully eventually get some item drops. You don't get that many of them, but you do get them. In the meantime, we're just going to keep lasering stuff <laughs> yeah my laser is fairly powerful um that's by the way why i have this particular build but don't worry we will be uh swapping things out in just a while so we got ourselves an objective so we want to destroy the brews well let's see what 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 exactly are the brews well, we're going to have to figure that out now you can see that there's immediately a lot more enemies here generally as soon as you get into an area where there is some, um, some some objective of sorts, there's going to be a lot more enemies there and it's going to be a lot more dangerous. You will also frequently encounter bosses in those areas. And yeah, there are bosses. Again, this is actually just straight up a, a dungeon crawler like that. So here's our brew. We go ahead and take this down. And then there's a bunch of enemies coming in from the sides. We can relatively easily take care of these while we're continuing on with our our objective here. Oh, there we go. We actually dropped an item. Ooh, taking a bit of damage. Don't worry about it. We've got some healing. So to kind of explain my build a little bit, what I have is I have... Oh, we've got TNT. You can, if you pick up TNT, you can throw it and then it explodes. <laughs> but what I have is I have um, two abilities that require souls, which are this big beam that just does a ton of damage. And I have a healing ability, which is quite handy, because especially when, once you get to like boss fights and such, having some healing is very useful. Then I have uh, this right here, which makes my bow shoot fire arrows. I mostly have this to conserve on ammunition. There are various spots in the game where you more or less have to fight with uh, ranged weapons. It's not necessarily like hard required. The game isn't forcing you to do it. But if you don't do it with ranged weapons, it can end up being quite difficult. So the advantage of using... Oh, let's go ahead and get out of there. The advantage of using the, the fire arrows is that it functions as a secondary uh, source of ammunition. Uh, you need to pick up arrows yourself. You can see I only have 50 arrows, which is not that many, actually. And because I only have 50 arrows, I need to be, to be a bit careful of how I spend them. But that's where having this uh, ability comes in. It gives us eight fire arrows, which don't use any ammunition. So we can use that to get some extra hits in. All right, we're going to go ahead and continue fighting here. So you can see there's some enemies that we know from Minecraft and some we don't. Although I think every enemy, enemy in the game very much fits into kind of the Minecraft fantasy. So 
that's all very good. All right, take these down. Thank you very much. We found the cauldron. And how many more are there to go? Let's maybe clean out this area before we start kind of changing around what we are doing with our build a little bit so I can showcase how the overall upgrading slash level up system works in this. It's not really a level up system, but no, no, it is. It is a level up system. There you go. You just leveled up. It's just a bit unusual in how it works. Not to say that it's bad. I actually quite like it. I think it's, oh, there we go. I think we just clipped an enemy through the floor. So this is something that happens sometimes. Um, I don't really want to make it sound as if this happens all the time, though. It has happened twice to me so far, uh, excluding that one. One time also with another enemy, and then one time with me, <laughs> with which which kind of sucked because I died. Um, but it is fairly rare, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Let me go ahead and grab this. Uh, we are still looking for these potions. Now, you can just enable a map like this. Uh, which you then always have on the screen, and it just kind of shows you where things are. Uh, usually, you should probably play with having this active. I personally prefer it without, because I think the overlay is just kind of a little bit distracting. But uh, generally speaking, I know that in these type of games, it's very common to just have um, the map active at all times. Well, oh, never mind. I think we've actually gotten all of the potions. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So we've cleared this area. Now we can go into the next one. And uh, yeah, so we go, right? And we're going to just keep running through this as we encounter enemies until we get into a new area. Oh, we found an Enderman. There we go. Enderman, of course, being quite dangerous, as you might imagine. Oh, 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 let's, let's maybe be a bit careful around that guy. Oh, oh, God. All right, we got, we got maybe a bit of a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is where the game actually can become quite difficult at times uh go ahead and one more shot nice all right so let me go ahead and show you how generally equipment and such things work in this game so if we go into our inventory you can see we have a bunch of stuff now this down here these are our abilities and for example i could go in here and say you know what i don't want my laser beam anymore Instead, I want a dog. So now I have a dog I can summon. If this dog dies, then it goes on cooldown, and after a while I can summon it again. And there we go, the dog is already <laughs> quite, quite active. And that's how you generally um, select your abilities. So I can have this death cap mushroom. Let's say I, I don't want my little um, soul healing thing that I had before. I can activate this, and now I, I attack much faster, I move faster. Right, and I just generally go a little bit nuts with that. And that's how you select your build. Like, that's it. Now, there's a little bit more nuance to this. Just a tad little bit. So, for example, I have uh, upgrades for every item. So, you can see this common hunting bow. If you check in the bottom right corner, then we have the ability to enchant it with a plus 50% bonus damage to enchanted enemies. Uh, with... Uh, a shot that fires a secondary shot, shot, uh, increased attack speed. Hitting an enemy has a chance to send it into a rage, making it hostile. Grants a chance to five, fire five arrows at once, or boosts arrow pushback. And every item has these sort of enchantments. Now, not every item has the same amount of enchantment slots. So you can see this one, for example, has two different enchantment slots. If I enchanted right here, I enchanted with rapid fire. Now you can see I can only upgrade Rapid Fire in this particular slot. And over here, if I were to choose Multishot, I can only upgrade Multishot. Now these enchantments is also the primary way you level up. So the only way for... So I can get back these enchantment points I just used. And you can see in the top left corner, we have 1,642 gems, what I call emeralds. There we go. You have 1,642 emeralds, but we have zero enchantment points. Now, if I go in here, I can salvage this item, destroying it, and now I got myself the enchantment points back. And that's how you go through the game upgrading stuff. So as I find new things, let's say I have this thief armor here. And oh, that's, you can see it has, again, two enchantment slots. So I can get uh, fire damage leaving behind me, rolling saps for your nearby enemies, uh, reduces the cooldown times between, time between users of your artifacts, 
Whenever you use the healing potion, you sometimes create random consumables. When activating any artifact, you gain 20% movement speed. Or whenever you use a healing potion, you take 90% damage for a short duration. All right, so you can see it has some upgrades there that seem fairly powerful. So if I want to equip this, right, then I say, okay, I replace it with that. And then I start upgrading this. But then I want to adjust my build because my current build is kind of just, let me show you what I have. So I have this right here, which makes it so I gather more souls. I have, a, and it also makes it so that I heal whenever we gather souls. I have this right here, which also makes it so I gather more souls. And it gives me a speed boost whenever we gather souls. And then I have this one, which just kind of is a good ranged weapon. This one isn't really that spectacular. Uh, but then, as you saw earlier, we have uh, this cube, which does a ton of um, damage coupled with the healing. And then with these two, we can really use the fact that we're gathering so many souls. Now, when I find a better item, what I will do is I will completely replace the stuff that I have with new things and then change my build entirely. And that's the only way to do it. So there's no stats. I don't build strength or intelligence. And then, of course, because I have built intelligence, I am now a mage. I am purely a mage at this point in time because the best item combo that I have is a mage item combo. As soon as I find an item combo that functions differently, that might be a stronger melee build, then it makes sense for me to completely get rid of my mage items, even disenchant them. That way I get the enchantment points back. I spend those on a melee build. And then I, um, well... From that point on, I'll be able to, to do melee stuff, right? And from that point on, I'm a melee fighter. That's the whole process. There's no, again, there's no big leveling up or anything like that. Um, although level ups matter significantly just because you get yourself really nice uh, enchantment possibilities. But despite that, in the end, the game is fairly straightforward in terms of what you do. But I think the simplicity is actually a very big strength here. It makes it so that you are always constantly changing what character you're playing. While playing this game, I have changed my character, my build, surely, I don't know, like five, six times. It feels like I have played five, six different classes of character. Now, while the combat itself isn't the most complex, as you can see, we only have three abilities, and honestly, my attacking isn't really that crazy, uh, and the combat system itself isn't really the most complex thing in the world, it still works pretty nicely, just because I have the ability to change things up so often, and in fact, I am encouraged to change things up so often. Right? That's always the, the, something I think is very important in game design, is just giving players the option to do something, isn't really enough. You need to encourage them. You need to give them a reward for doing it. And my reward for changing up my build is that, well, eventually I will just kind of need to, I guess, right? It's not really so much a reward as it is just how the game functions. Changing up my build makes me more powerful. So I will be doing that if I want to keep playing. Now, of course, uh, you can look at that and then say, well, but Bami, what if I like a build, right? What if I like a build and I don't want to change it up? Well, to be honest, you can actually stick to builds for quite a while, but, well, that might be a problem then, right? You can stick to builds for quite a while. You can just, like, try and max them out and maybe get some power that way. But at the same time, yeah, that then this game might just not be for you. Overall, I've kind of described it like this, and, and I feel, so this may sound bad, Please don't take it that way. I mean this in the best, most encouraging, most endorsing way possible. But Minecraft Dungeons is Diablo for kids. Which, it is great at being Diablo for kids. It is much simpler, right? It is, it has got a nice aesthetic that it really sticks to, that works very well for it. And it is honestly quite satisfying to play. For me, it is not a game that necessarily occupies a lot of my attention while I'm playing it. Oh, there's a lot of enemies here, right? In fact, I can... So what I found myself doing with this game is I've actually just been playing it while doing other stuff. I'm like, I don't know, watching a TV show or something, or I am... Um, or I'm, I'm like working, right? And I'll just 
throw on some Minecraft dungeons, run around, blast some some enemies, and and that's it. That's the entire entire thing. <laughs> but that works pretty nicely, right? For having a simple game like that. Um, that was actually quite a fun experience. All right, let's go ahead and we have this glaive now. So let's go ahead and actually just completely mess up my build. Let's get rid of you. Let's get rid of you. Let's get rid of you. So I've completely disassembled everything I have now, All right? So this right here is a glaive. It has a, a chance to stun, chance to cluster them or sets mobs on fire. That seems good. Let's go ahead and max this out. Then we have increased the chance to drop consumables, find more emeralds. Here, why not get some more consumables? Fantastic, we equipped that. So now we need, of course, something that works with that in terms of armor as well. Well, we definitely want this one. This gives us some damage boost. You know what? I think I would like some healing. We can still gather souls, right? So what do we have in armor here? 25% melee attack speed. Uh, or what What other armor do we have? What is this? 35% damage reduction and 30% melee damage but only nine health the other one gives us 58 health you know what why don't we take this one and then we can also upgrade that if we want to we also need to make sure that we have a ranged weapon why don't we go ahead and make it this one and since we're not really going for much range then let's get ourselves the dog in there and then let's have a quick look oh we're being attacked <laughs> all right let's go ahead and chop up this guy very nice so let's have a look at our 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 um armor here Leaves a trail of fire, saps them, reduces the cooldown time between users of your artifacts. That one seems perfect for us, right? Um, because then we can enable the rage more often, which is going to be giving us a ton of attack speed. So you can see we now have an, a fundamentally different playstyle, right? We have this as our ranged weapon, but honestly, it's not very well upgraded. It's not going to be what carries us through most of this. Instead, we are now a melee character, right? There we go. Look at that. And let's just kind of uh, work our way through this a little bit and see if we can find some enemies. Now, personally, I found playing melee characters to be a lot more difficult than playing ranged characters. Maybe that's just because I liked range. I like ranged characters more. Um, but I don't know. Melee characters can have it a bit hard at times. I think. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and just chop this stuff up. Of course, ideally, you have both melee and range in your build, right? That's kind of the the best thing possible. Um, admittedly, right now, I think we're a bit restricted in what we can do but keep in mind this build wasn't <laughs> wasn't exactly carefully constructed all right there's a chest hey cool we found another glaive so as you as you know we can just re we can just salvage our glaive that we currently have if we like this new one more well this one only has one enchantment slot and oh this one heals you though that's kind of nice hmm that is a very nice upgrade but sadly it's on a relatively mediocre weapon. Let's hope we find it on a better weapon eventually. For now, we're just going to be going through. We've got ourselves this right here. Chop these nerds up. Thank you very much. And uh, as you can see, our new strategy is still fairly powerful. We're still having a pretty good time with it. And honestly, that's it. That's what Minecraft Dungeons is. It is just a series of levels that you can go through. You can play it in co-op, which... Even though I was joking about not having friends in the beginning, and <laughs> well, that's true. Um, honestly, I've, I've kind of been wanting to play some co-op of this. I think co-op for this sounds like a lot of fun. And honestly, the game seems like it's built with co-op in mind. So it really makes me think that it should be an enjoyable experience. Overall, uh, I quite like Minecraft Dungeons. So let me go ahead and go return to camp really quick. We're not going to finish this level right here. Let's return to camp really quick and have a look at our vendors and then also at the mission select. So this is something I don't like about it. The only way you can buy stuff is through it being completely random. So if I want an artifact, all I can do is, yeah, get, get a completely random artifact here. I have no control over what it is. There's nothing I can do here. So someone's a llama. <gasps> Oh my god. Oh my god, I am an animal herder. <laughs> Let's go. Same is true for the gear. I have no no way to really manipulate this. 
I think that's a shame. I don't really like that very much. Now, you do get stuff that's appropriate for your level, as they say. But I think the fact that it is just random like that is a shame. Now, in the level select screen, you can see here, we are, here's our available levels. I've beaten all of those except for the last one. In the level select screen, every dungeon kind of has a starting level, like a minimum level, and then has a maximum level here, right? And you can kind of choose where you want to set them. Now it has a recommended power, meaning the recommended level of your character. And um, yeah, you just kind of like go through here. So you can see this one has recommended power one and then maximum recommended power 27. If we go in here, you know, maximum recommended power 27 again. This guy is fairly strong. Is 27? Oh yeah, it seems 27 is the maximum for all of them. That makes sense. That, that, does, that does actually sound kind of, yeah. Anyway, so maybe if we want to, let's say, go into this... Okay, let's maybe do a different area just so I can show. But let's go, let's go in it at a high difficulty. Why not? So at a higher difficulty, it does actually become quite a bit more difficult. Now, at this point, I would like to bring up some issues I have with the game. Some things I don't like too much about it. First of all, um, as much as I'm praising it for being a, a, a good game for kids, it is still a game for kids. And if I'm looking at it as just a game, not as a game for kids then, ooh, shit, <laughs> then it becomes, honestly, it, the simplicity, as much as it's nice, it can also become a little bit dull at times, right? Just, it's it's maybe a little bit too much at times. Secondly, there's not that much interesting enemy variety. Enemy variety in this game mostly consists of enemies having different skins, not so much different effects. Which is a shame. There's some cool enemies. So there, there's some that I really liked. Like, uh, for example, there's uh, monster spawners that just... where well, you have to kill the monster spawner. You don't have to kill the monsters that spawn. They get spawned from it. But, you know, it's kind of tricky because you have to get to the monster spawner first. All right, go ahead and summon some stuff. We've got our llama here. Let's go llama time. There we go. Enemies are also a little bit inconsistent with when they have hit stunned. So sometimes you hit an enemy and they don't react and then they just punch you back and you die. Which can be really frustrating, especially in larger groups of enemies. So that's something that I also think is, is not ideal. Finally, I had some issues with um, just kind of like setup. So that was just right about before I started recording this video. I was about to start recording it. And then, uh, as I was doing that, all of the sudden... Oh, God. We're kind of dying here. <laughs> all of the sudden, I um, couldn't connect with my Xbox controller. It would just automatically switch back to my keyboard. There was nothing wrong with my controller. I loaded up a different game. I loaded up Hades. And I could play Hades just fine with the controller. That wasn't the problem. Um, the problem was just that the game didn't really recognize my controller, but it wasn't that it wasn't recognizing it. It was only recognizing it for player two, and it wasn't letting me switch out of that. And it was really weird. I had to restart my computer for, <laughs> for that to be fixed. Only then did it actually work properly again. So, yeah, that wasn't really ideal. Ow, that, that hurts. Now, what happens when you die? I haven't explained that yet. So you have three lives for each each level. You, you may die three times, and if you didn't die again, that's it. You're done. You have to restart from the beginning. And it's like a legitimate game over. You just, you gotta, gotta go, gotta go back to the beginning then. So, that's kind of neat, honestly. Like, it, it does really make you feel a bit of tension. Like, having the free lives, I think, is quite generous. Um, but, you know, especially with the harder difficulty here, at times that can... Uh, can feel appropriate, right? So I personally have no problem with the life system. I think having a bit of a breather to sometimes do some silly stuff can be nice. Now, there are a few situations where it isn't ideal. So for example, there's this one uh, situation that I encountered where you basically run into a trap. There's like a chest and if you activate a bunch of enemies spawn around you. And I wanted the contents of, this, of the chest, but I knew I wouldn't be able to defeat the enemies. So what I did is I just activated the chest and died. And then it spawned me, like, further away. <laughs> and it wasn't a problem. Um, so that felt like I was abusing the system a little bit. But yeah, anyway. I think that's about it. That's Minecraft Dungeons. Um, honestly, I would recommend it. If if you're not... So, let's, let's, let's say it like this. If you are 
not super into into these games, right? Into into Diablo or something like that. Um, but you've been been interested in them maybe before, then maybe give this a go. If Path of Exile seemed like a fun idea to you, but then it was just way too much. Which, by the way, I know there's gonna be some people now that are like, oh, but Path of Exile is perfect. No, Path of Exile has like a lot going on. And to be honest, when I played it at times, I felt like, man, is this even worth all of that? So if you're looking for something that's that's got, you know, just a, a, a less going on, but still has like a, a similar kind of like fun gameplay feeling to it, then Minecraft Dungeons, I think, is pretty great for that. All right, go ahead and get that. It does have a little bit less loot, though. Oh, I died. Oh, well, there you go. Now you get to see what it's like when you respawn. <laughs> All right, anyway. So that is Minecraft Dungeons. Let me actually maybe return to main menu really quick. That is Minecraft Dungeons. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a rating on the video. And don't forget to share it with somebody that might be interested in hearing about Minecraft Dungeons. Please let me know what would be a good review to do next. You can follow me on Twitter and tweet at me. I, I'll see you there for sure at Captain Balmy. Right, there's a link in the description. And then finally, I tried to keep it shorter this time. I hope this one was better. I'm trying really hard with these. Please uh, feel free to leave me some feedback. I hope to see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.